Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions, my name is Nick, and today we're going to be checking out Fract OSC by developer Phosphine Systems. You might remember I actually covered a, a very old build of this game, I guess we were calling it the beta version back in the day. This was around two years ago, and right at the very beginning of this entire series, it was in fact the fifth episode that I ever covered and one of my favorite games that I'd ever checked out on the channel, and it's just kind of amazing that all of this time later we're actually sitting in front of a final build of what was and is one of the coolest abstract exploration games that I've ever seen. The, the premise to this game is that we're basically dropped into this world, a kind of a dystopian, abstract future world that we have no knowledge of what's going on inside of, but it's basically a dead city made out of sound. At least that's kind of what I took away from it. Uh, so we're going to be wandering around, looking around, and just seeing what there is to see. We'll also maybe solving a few puzzles and just basking in the ambient glory that I seem to find all around me. It's uh, it's going to be really difficult for me not to just spout nothing but praise for this entire uh, video. But, you know, if that's what it comes to, then I guess that's what it comes to. Uh, this is a very promising area. Look at all these locks. I love finding locks in games. It's just like... A, you know, a guideline to be able to see all of the things that are ahead of you, to be able to figure out. And in this case, I think it has something to do with the music-making mechanism of this. And there are, in fact, puzzles that will unlock tools where later in the game you'll be able to actually put things together and create music of your own accord. And, uh, you know, in case you didn't get the impression uh, just by looking around here, this is actually kind of a light version of what we're going to see. Everything gets very, very beautiful and very detailed and incredibly just ornate and neon and colorful and kind of just exciting. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of what I took away from it. Everything's got this great sense of color to it and is just glowing and wonderful. So uh, this is actually tutorializing. This is telling me uh, to use the right mouse click and then left click there to activate this device, which then lights up this brilliant set of like lightning bolts here. So we're going to head into this elevator and go to a uh, tutorial zone. And uh, from there, we will learn a little bit more about how the game works, and then eventually we will land in what turns out to be a very large uh, and broad open-world exploration area that we're going to spend most of the video, in fact, all of the rest of the video, and other than this tutorial. So I will see you after this loading screen. All right, so things were very dark and very kind of down-tempo in the world that we were just in, but this is a very nice welcome change. I think this is a much more uh, inviting environment, sort of an alien landscape covered in these little glowing spores of some kind. You can see off in the distance there seems to be some very large structures uh, sort of melting away into what appears to be almost like white-hot lava or something. Like, it's not exactly what it is, but it might as well be. Uh, so let's have a look around. We see there's some caverns up above. And you're probably getting the impression there seems to be some sort of a coating over your screen. Uh, reminds me a little bit of like an interlacing thing that you might see over like a glare protection surface over a monitor or something like that. Uh, not sure if that's exactly what's supposed to be evocative, but it's uh, uh, something that grabbed me anyway. And there's also a little bit more of an intensified version of that when you use what seems to be like your interaction screen on right click. Uh, sort of strikes me a little bit as like the sort of like a scan filter that you would have in, like, Metroid Prime or something like that, only, you know, a little bit of a different use in this case. I've noticed a couple of times, actually forgotten to take that filter back off, which is not a huge deal or anything, but, uh, you know, much prefer to see things unfettered and clear like this when possible. So if you haven't gotten an impression yet of the visuals, uh, what I seem to like in this, too, seems to be a little bit like uh, Picture Reboot. There was, a, you know, the 90s cartoon... Uh, which was sort of an experiment in futuristic, at the time, like, 3D rendering techniques, and, you know, something that I found very kind of, you know, a mark of the times of the 90s, and something very cool and sort of near and dear to me personally, a show that I enjoyed very much. It also reminds me a little bit of Antichamber, uh, as well as Res, a PS2 game that was also quite great. Uh, and it's just a whole bunch of different references that just sort of feel like they're straight out of the 90s in a way, and like the when we were so taken back by how awesome this this futuristic technology is. Lawnmower Man also comes to mind, uh, but it's got this elegance to it that definitely transcends that era, so it's like it starts there and then it kind of moves a bit past it. Uh, so this is telling us again, uh, and we could, we could be using a 360 controller, in this case I'm using mouse and keyboard, just feels right to me here. And this is teaching us we can look around uh, using, you know, right-click and hold. 
and we're going to go over here and we're going to actually look at and activate these buttons on all the sides. I love the elegance too of the way that folds together. Everything's very smooth and very, you know, polished in this game, and I think that's just a theme in general. Uh, so you'll notice this pink stripe here is lit up down whatever this structure seems to be. This is like a root or something, like a cyber root. And there's all these beautiful particles hanging in the air, as well as you'll see all kinds of other stuff like that in the next area. And it's like it's a nice chrome kind of sheen on the ground. And then off in the distance, we can tell that that's also lit up on that end. So this is telling us, well, essentially, that's sort of like a hub. And what we're going to find out is actually this structure that we're going to be standing on is eventually going to act very much like a macro version of the key that led us to this tutorial world in the first place. So it's sort of folding into itself, which is kind of fantastic. Uh, just great colors, too, here. Like, as I'm looking around, we've got this royal purple and then this silver fading into white and then some silhouetted, you know, dark different, you know, slate and charcoal and things like that. And all of those just look fantastic together. And then, of course, the stark contrast of just one hit of brilliant color. You know, I, it's a really refined artistic look, in my opinion. It is probably one of the nicest looking games I've seen in a long time, if not ever. Uh, and it might be a little bit early to say, given that I've only played about a half an hour of this, but I have a hard time believing that this wouldn't end up being one of my favorite games of this year already, uh, just based on the little bit that I've seen. You'll see when we get to the next area, it is... It, it's pretty crazy. Uh, so we're going to hold down the button again. This is teaching us to manipulate dials of kind, or, or sliders in this case. And that has activated the green strip. And then we've got one more little task to do before we get to take off to uh, the proper world. Now I'm definitely going to spend enough time here to get to a point where we're actually going to be able to experience at least one of the, the sound-based puzzles because they're really quite special, and I think they present uh, a s sort of an ambience that I don't think I've ever really seen done before, the way that it's executed. I mean, I've seen a few things that have gotten close, but I don't think I've seen anything that's quite this cohesive before. These, like, spirits rising up into the sky. I mean, you honestly don't have any clue. Like, this is completely abstract, and I love it, uh, because you can kind of assign any story you want to this, but it's got this, like, technological bent to it, as well as just mystery uh, and the ambience is not really foreboding. It's sort of friendly in a strange way. And there we go. We just got to uh, you know, manipulate that dial. And there we go. Now we've got all three colors lit up. And all of the strips. I believe this one had... Yeah, that one has its own strip as well going in that direction. Uh, but it's just kind of amazing that you could have something this foreign and this alien and still have it come across reasonably friendly because it, it's not really a, a scary game at least from what I can tell, but it definitely does have a lot of mood and a lot of atmosphere to it. Uh, and it's not that it necessarily had to fall into being a scary game, but, you know, it would be kind of an easy trap to fall into considering how lonely things are around here. So you might have noticed we seem to be ascending into the sky, and these bits that we've lit up are actually, like I said already, going to act as sort of the, uh, the key to a lock mechanism up above us that's going to allow us access to the next area. And look at that, almost an opalescent or pearlescent texture going on on the wall. These are actually grabbing some of the light that's bouncing off of those pillars. And the sound is actually ramping up as well. And that's a large part of the majesty of what I know about Fract, is that basically uh, the visuals are just half of the experience. The audio is the other half, and I urge you guys to definitely play this with headphones on and crank it up as loud as you can, because this is uh, not doing it justice by any means, playing it, you know, hearing it through secondhand, through me. Uh, also, I don't probably have it up nearly as loud as it deserves to be. So, we are now presented with another sort of a pagoda, a little pavilion area, and we can actually walk through one of these directions. I'm not sure it really matters which side we pick. But all of those tiles just melt away, and before us we have a vast world to explore, and it is just full of details. And look down there, we've got these, uh, some sort of spheres made up of a lattice, all neon, all glowing and beautiful. We've got these particles that seem to be resting on the ground and floating away, as well as some particles that just give us a sense of air mass. And then, of course, in the distance, a whole bunch of different structures. And we can proceed in any direction, there's really no... Uh, you know, forced linear path that we're required to take at the beginning aside from just that tutorial area. So once we're here, uh, the world is our oyster. We can really go in any direction. So you'll notice off in the distance there seems to be some sort of 
you know, spherical thing. I'm not really sure what to call it, but this is actually going to be one of our uh, many hubs, and I'm going to use the Dark Souls reference because it's just the most relatable thing at the moment. Uh, but these are kind of like your bonfires and let you warp between one and the other. Uh, right now, we're not going to really have much to warp between, but it does at least give you an idea of what to expect here. Uh, this sort of looks like uh, some sort of planetarium or something, but these are all the different hubs that we'll eventually land at. Uh, maybe not hubs, but uh, points that we'll land at, and this is the one that we're at currently uh, with the target below it, and you can see the target up on the wall there to sort of confirm that in case you were wondering. Uh, and this also seems to have a little lock mechanism in it. But I'll just make that go away for a moment, and we'll just wander off in some arbitrary direction and see what kind of adventures we can find ourselves in. Uh, as we move to the right here, you might notice... Will you notice it? Actually, I thought these built up. I, last time I was here, I thought I remembered these uh, pink cubes sort of uh, becoming larger and, and more granular and sort of flying out from the walls, but I think maybe that was a slightly different spot. Uh, there's all sorts of little details like that, though. Pretty much anywhere you go, you're going to find something visually unique and rather stunning, and that's it sort of feels like the payoff is just endless in this game. Everywhere I go, no matter what direction I face in, there's something pretty to look at, and it just really does suck me into just wanting to explore this environment and just completely lose, you know, any semblance of reality at this point. So let's look down here and see what we can see. I can fall off at any point here if I choose to. Really doesn't matter a whole lot, actually. There's no real penalty if you fall into a position where you can't get back out. It'll actually just warp you back up to the last ground that you stood on. That is really pretty. I just chose to fall down here just to see what would happen. Uh, to maybe demonstrate what the reset looks like, but since I landed on something, it looks like I actually didn't get myself into trouble after all. Uh, I'm going to guess, though, I probably can't stand on this structure. Is this... yeah, that's goo. Alright, I wasn't sure if it was solid, but now I know. Oh yeah, this is the pink area that I was talking about, where this, these shards seem to build out by themselves. Uh, I should mention, there isn't a jump button. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. In this case, I've found it slightly frustrating at times because there's some certain ledges that I want to just jump up on top of, but it's not really possible. Uh, you really have to be a little bit more careful about how you position yourself if you want to climb up things. Um, not that it's necessary that we have a jump button. It just sort of seems like something that's pre-programmed into me to want to do. Also, the game defaults you to uh, running as holding down shift. I've chosen to set that as auto run just to be on. Uh, probably a good recommendation, at least it felt right for me to do that. Um, I also set it uh, so the, you know, the graphics were upgraded a little bit. I turned up the mouse sensitivity and things, so, you know, default settings might not be perfect, but just take a second and look through the options menu. It's uh, honestly something I usually do, but I neglected to in this case for whatever reason. So if you needed to see what's here, there we go. Mouse sensitivity, I have it set about halfway up. Could actually go a little bit higher than that. Auto run. Uh, check that. Oh, it actually undid auto run, so I'll put that back on. And stabilize audio. I'm not actually 100% on what that one does. Uh, it says something about to do with uh, if you have issues with like hardware on your audio stuff. So might need it, might not. All right. Looks like Fract and Fraps didn't want to play nicely together. Apparently, toggling on VSync while I'm recording uh, probably not the best idea. Just kind of crashed. But no biggie. Uh, we're back. I adjusted the settings, and we're pretty much good to go. I put on VSync and FXAA. So, might even look a little bit prettier now, so let's go back and we'll continue on. Uh, what I want to do is find a puzzle, and I'm trying to remember where there was a puzzle. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I headed up the pink path, I think there was something going on over there. And besides, even if there isn't, it's real pretty up there. As you can see, there's little pink flipping discs coming over, and I uh, just sort of want to see where this path leads again. They all seem to have these elaborate setups going on in them. Um, and as you can see, or, or maybe eventually you'll get to hear, rather, uh, as we solve some of these puzzles, it seems like the soundtrack actually sort of evolves with the player. And this is also really cool, too. I don't know if you noticed that, but as we got closer, whatever that structure is seems to actually just sort of build itself in front of you. And this is a, a thing that you'll see happen a whole bunch of times, uh, where there's these sort of lit up little edges that'll just materialize and sort of add a little bit of extra ambience. So we're just kind of locking in another one of these spawn points here. Um, oh, there it is. For some reason, it didn't seem to trigger the first time. Maybe it was just standing inside of all of it. Uh, so there we go. We can see we're right there. And let's go up into this bizarre castle-ish type structure, which seems to have some great neon fluorescent edges. 
Oh, see, this is an example of one of those times where, like, I kind of wish we could jump, because you can get stuck on some little bits of the geometry at times. Not like a huge deal or anything, but it has happened a couple of times now that I've noticed. Uh, so don't fall in there, that's a problem. But this, right here, is an example of one of the many, uh, sort of arpeggiator, oscillator, synthesizer, musical puzzles that I've run into. I'm not exactly sure how to actually even interact with this one, to be perfectly honest, but I did find it, and it definitely looks like a thing that we're going to be doing something with. Uh, I've noticed whenever there seems to be ambient sound that's coming out of something, this is probably a piece of machinery that we need to figure out what to do with, and oh, alright, now things are working out. Uh, so just flipping up our sort of visor allows us to see some things that we couldn't see a moment ago, but which one out of these can we move? Alright, so this seems to be sort of a sliding block puzzle, and forgive me if I don't get it right on the first go, but I did just want to take a quick look here and see what happens. So he seems to we seem to have built some sort of bridge. I'm gonna walk over that bridge and see what happens if I go over here. Oh, what just happened? Is it is it deer materializing or is it oh, it's just being nice and giving me a nice path when I walk over it, that's all. So maybe from over here, yep, now we can maybe interact with this on a different plane. Is that the idea? Alright, so now we want to maybe lock this one in on the other end. Uh, I'm not sure where I actually want to put this block. I'm assuming probably the wireframe box over here, but it didn't seem to have attracted to anything or anything really changed. Uh, that's fine. Maybe we'll go from another angle and keep sliding things around a little bit more. But you can hear that the music has actually picked up a little bit since I've moved some of those around. Um, what if I put it in that box? There we go. We've got lasers. Lasers are always good. Uh, so what's going on now? We seem to have powered up this green block downstairs that's kicking up some pink laser up into that receptacle. And there's just been this green laser there the whole time. That one doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. And our bridge seems to be gone at this point. Uh, do I still want to interact with any of this stuff? Probably not, because I think I want it to be the way it is. Chances are we've already opened up another path, but I'm not 100% sure where. It's well, well, it's probably the thing in the center with the big glowing disc in it, wouldn't you think? Alright, let's touch that Triforce Triangle thing, and we seem to be going up. Oh boy, I don't know where we're going to be going up to. This is the first I've seen of this area, so I'm excited. Anytime we get a chance to look at things from a different perspective, I'm always super psyched. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at everything breaking apart off in the distance like that. It's just incredible to me how different this is from when I saw it in the earlier form, and I'm not saying that like it's a bad thing. Uh, honestly, I'm shocked at how amazing this looks. It looked amazing before, and honestly, I would have been perfectly happy with uh, exactly what we had then with more onto it, but this is like a whole new world. Uh, if you don't mind me quoting Aladdin. <laughs> uh, so what's going on here? It seems to be building some sort of arc for me to stand in, maybe. Is there a puzzle here? There. Oh, there seems to be a timeline. And I seem to be able to add links to the timeline. See, what I love about this is every bit of the language that this game carries is foreign to me, but it's not, because it's music. So although you don't know exactly what we're doing, you still can kind of pick up on the patterns very quickly. Uh, in this case, not really sure what our end goal is just yet, but it might require a little bit of experimentation. I did, of course, notice that there were the two blocks that seemed to be uh, a little bit more gray in tone than the other two, or the other set, rather. Um, and also you can see that we have this many nuggets to allocate. Maybe we come back later as we solve more puzzles, and then we can allocate more nuggets, and maybe the goal is to fill up more of these. I'm not sure, um, but I'm sure that you'll let me know. Seems to be the trend anytime I don't get a puzzle right away. But I like the exploration and the, the figuring it all out and being kind of lost in a totally weird world that you just don't know quite what you're doing in. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that I would want to preserve anyway, so no spoilers, please. Um, I don't even know what those are, but they remind me of those structures that you run around in on overgrowth. But I want to kind of get down there and look around. There is another one of the hubs that we can go interact with, but I don't know if I want to jump down quite yet, because I'm enjoying having this vantage point up here. I also just want to see if this leads anywhere else that's particularly neat. Uh, it feels like I'm off into another world right now, because you can see this is the initial hub world down at the bottom. 
And this is, I think, the highest I've been so far. I wonder if I can get all the way up there. So far I'm getting the impression, though, that anywhere you can see, you can eventually reach. Uh, was this just the elevator that I came up from? I think it was. It's kind of easy to get disoriented and turned around, uh, but that's just kind of due to the nature of this being so abstract. Uh, there are plenty of landmarks, though, so in the defense of the game, uh, it's partially just me losing my place here. That is so pretty, my goodness. I just love these colors so much. I'm not sure if I'm actually supposed to be standing in this. I may have gotten myself stuck. Uh, there is a way to reset, but it's going to require that I escape back out, because, yeah, right now it doesn't seem like I can get out of this spot. There's no duck either, right? No, there's no duck. All right, well, I think that might be a good spot to end things. I hate to end it on a glitch like this, but at least we get some sweet pink uh, colorfulness everywhere. Uh, if you couldn't tell, Fract OSC, the most thumbs up. You, like, you just need to go check this out. If you have any interest in sort of surreal, abstract exploration games, or if you're uh, especially involved in music, uh, or just enjoy the ambience of something like this, or even have fond memories of Lawnmower Man, <laughs> or, uh, you know, the other uh, stuff that I mentioned, the other references, uh, you just want to go ahead and grab this. I, I really have very few negative things to say about it at all. Uh, this is kind of like a game that was custom designed for me, so honestly, I guess... You know, maybe I'm not the right person to go to for completely unbiased coverage of Fract, but if you're involved in sort of the, the things that perpetuate this channel and you have a similar taste to the games that you may have heard me raving about in the past, uh, this pretty much typifies all of them. So, yeah, I don't have much more to say than that. It gets all the recommendations. Uh, link's going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and purchase this one. Game is available right now and I highly encourage you to do so. So let me know what you think of this in the comments. I'd love to hear your, uh, you know, your own assertions on what you think is cool and not cool and could be improved or is perfect. Any of that stuff, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from all of you. Uh, the more the merrier. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like on it. I would love to hear uh, some support also. That's always fantastic too. So I will be back again for another episode tomorrow. Indie Impressions runs every single day. So if you like what you see today, uh, consider subscribing because there will be a lot more episodes. We're, again, I mentioned this earlier, but we're like 700 plus episodes into this, and this is probably one of my favorites of the whole series so far. So I hope to see you back for another one tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you all then. Have a great night, guys.